Hello and welcome to Jessie Bear Book Club. Today we are reviewing The Deuce. The Deuce is an HBO show about the Deuce strip in New York from 1971 to 1985. It stars James Franco as twins Vinnie and Frankie and Maggie Gyllenhaal as the prostitute Candy. This show is criminally underrated and unknown and the sets and costumes are amazing and very period accurate with little CGI. The stories are also loosely based on real life. My favourite character by far is the evil pimp Cece, played by Gary Carr, complete with pimp stick, Cadillac car and hat. This guy will cut a bitch if she's not working. It's hard to believe this actor once played Fidel in Death in Paradise, where he is super sweet. Gary Carr is an amazing British actor showing extraordinary range and capability. Maggie Gyllenhaal, playing the prostitute Candy, spends the whole first season looking like she's about to burst into tears every five minutes. Candy is ambitious to get into the new exciting porn industry that is opening up in New York, but I find her strangely detached from reality most of the time. I think this is a character choice and a defense mechanism, and Maggie Gyllenhaal plays it perfectly. Darlene, another prostitute featured in the first two seasons of this show, is played by Dominique Fishback. She is so sympathetic, even if she does manipulate a girl, Ginger from back home, into the game. Her pink wine and books at the bar are so relatable, as well as fixing her shoes with safety pins. My second favourite character in this show is Laurie, played by Emily Mead. That girl never stood a chance against Cece's mind games, but she is so incredibly cute and all her outfits in season one are such a trash hippie vibe. I love it, though I do prefer dark haired Laurie to blonde Laurie in the later seasons. Personal preference though, I'm a dark haired girly. Towards the end of season one, when Ashley escapes Cece, I want to yell at the TV, you go girl. At the beginning of season one, all the girls are on the street, but by the end, we have opened the Ho House, or Pussy Palace, and that opens up a whole new storyline for season two, because the pimps now have less to do, and the scene in the diner where Rodney says he went to see Fantasia, and he liked the hippos, really made me laugh. When Ruby is killed in the final episode of season one, I was so shocked and saddened because Ruby was such a character, a thunder thighs, as advertised. It's a pity we didn't get more of her. By season two, everything has changed. Vince now has a disco, and the porn world is changing the way people consume women. Laurie is chafing under Cece's control, and gets validation when she wins an award for Best Supporting Actress in a porno, flying to LA alone to collect her award. Candy is now bored making the same basic porn flicks over and over and wants to make something bigger, setting her eyes on a feature-length porno about Red Riding Hood called Red Hot. Ashley is also back on the scene, this time as an activist, trying to get prostitutes off the street and going by her real name, Dorothy. Seeing Cece still shakes her though. I am actually amazed by how many free drinks are given away in this show. How does Vince ever make any money? There is also an underlying police storyline the whole way from season one to season three, but I don't really care about that and it never goes anywhere apart from them cleaning up the deuce and making it into Times Square. It does follow corruption slightly, but I don't find that as interesting as the rest of the stuff going on, so I'm not going to bring it up. There is also Abby's storyline from college dropout, running a bar, going out with Vince, having an open relationship. 
then deciding she likes women, then leaving Vince. But I simply don't like Abby as a character. So again, I'm not going to bring her up too much. I think Vince and Abby especially are more of a mechanism to move the story forward because they run the bars in this. There are so many great parts to season two. It is definitely the high point of this show. I especially enjoy seeing Larry Brown, the pimp, get into acting. He is so funny as the wolf in Red Hot. The murder of Cece by Bobby and Frankie at the end of season two is so sudden and just what Cece deserved. But Black Frankie's reaction to the murder tops it all. Pinnacle dark humour. Ashley's murder, though, was so preventable. She was warned to stop what she was doing or the pimps would hurt her. And they hurt her. And it's definitely the most devastating part of this whole show. Season 3 is a brave new world. Things are changing and changing fast. And that can't be stopped because we now have VHS and AIDS to contend with. Laurie Madison is coped out of her head and getting bored with the porn game and maybe getting a little diva-esque. Candy is also bored making the same sorts of movies over and over, but there just isn't the money in porn that there was when she began. VHS has changed that, especially home movies. Paul's storyline this season, though, is so painful. Watching AIDS kill his partner when he finally finds success, and then watching AIDS get Paul, I teared up both times I watched this. Candy doesn't really get an ending in season three. She never finds true success. She ends up just going back to porn because the movie she's trying to make, she can't get a budget for. She finds success after death, but that's not really so exciting when you get the flashback. When Laurie kills herself, it is so shocking and out of nowhere. At least that's how it felt to me. But I guess that's the point because you never know what is going on inside someone's head. The only problem with season three is there isn't enough of the original cast, I feel, from season one. There's a slight follow-up with Darlene, but not enough, and we don't get any Larry Brown. Did he eventually make it as an actor? I want to know. The flash-forward flashback at the end of the final episode was an okay wrap-up, but maybe an easy out. You know, they picked the easy choice. I think over these three seasons, the second season is the best, closely followed by the first season and the third season is just kind of meh but that's my opinion i give this show 7 out of 10 imdb gives it 8.1 out of 10 so their ranking is higher than mine but i think mine counts more because it's my opinion if you enjoyed this video remember to subscribe to this channel i have full playlists of historical TV reviews and book reviews. I also talk a lot about Game of Thrones. You can also follow me on Instagram at Lady Jessica Riddell. Until next time, bye!